A show I've been mentally preparing for for a really long time is finally here. It's the Rasmus Dahlin Extension Show coming up on Locked On Sabres. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, and thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is presented by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL to get up to a $100 match in your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. We are finally going to do it. The Rasmus Dahlin extension show. Dahlin is under contract until the year 2031 with the Buffalo Sabres, the team announcing an eight-year deal. We'll talk all about it, the money involved in the deal, some Twitter nonsense from other markets on this contract, what Kevin Adams had to say about it as well. And then some really fun news about Zach Benson to get to a little bit later on. If you've been tracking the show, tracking the team over the past couple of weeks, you already know what I'm talking about. He's going to make the team. He's going to play opening night. And we'll talk about that in the third segment of today's show. At Locked On Sabres on Twitter to get a hold of us there. And you can always get a hold of us on the YouTube's at uh, Locked On Sabers as well. Saw a couple of tweets and comments on our last episode um, where we talked about what Zach Benson's ceiling is for the year and coming up as well. And a lot of excitement. A lot of fans and listeners thinking that Benson could become a superstar player on this team, which I think is completely within the realm of possibility for a 13th overall pick that is going to make the team as an 18-year-old. You got to have some special talent to be able to do that. And Benson is showing off. But Dalene is what we're here to talk about early on on today's show. Eight years. $88 $88 million total, $11 million per year. That brings Darlene into a tie with Drew Doughty of the Los Angeles Kings at $11 million per year. He is the second highest paid defenseman, or I should say tied for the second highest paid defenseman in the NHL right behind Eric Carlson. And I think it is completely well-deserved. You know, we, at one point, I looked back, on some of our old show logs from two years ago, two, three years ago, 2020, 2021. And I did an episode on April 13th of 2021. So this is uh, not even two years ago. And actually, sorry, not April, October of 2021. Not even two years ago. And I had done an episode on this show that was titled constructing the Rasmus Dahlin fear bunker. We were worried. I was worried, at least. I know a lot of fans were as well, that it just wasn't working. Dahlin had not become an, let a, an elite defenseman. He hadn't even become a great defenseman in the first, you know, three years and change of his career, which really is most of the years that he had Ralph Kruger as his head coach. And looking back, I think we all know what happened on that one as to why he was struggling to get going out of the gates in his NHL career. And point totals is a pretty, you know, elementary way of doing the doing the math on this guy, but you can just see the story of his career by looking at the point totals. 44 points as an 18-year-old rookie under Phil Housley. All right, pretty good. Year two, 40 points in 59 games. Only four goals. That was a little weird, remember? Then the next year, the, the COVID season, uh, 23 points in 56 games. And there we were like, oh, man, this is not going well. He is not good. Hopefully he turns into what? A, a second pair defenseman? Where, where were we even at at that point? We were scared. I was scared. I know that. And then. Don Granado got a hold of him, and the first month didn't go well. Remember, Granado got him, and it was, don't be afraid to make mistakes and take chances, and what happened in the first month? Oh, he was getting walked repeatedly because he was taking chances, but it was new to him because Kruger had eliminated that from his game. Kruger would lock him on a chain to the blue line and not allow him to go up in the zone, not allow him to carry the puck in himself, not allow him to do really anything except stand on the blue line, play defense, and be a, a pretty, you know, locked-in defenseman, not the freedom to do anything. 
So Granado gets him, and after about a month, things started working, things started clicking, and over the last over the last 20 months might be the right time frame to, to put on this, the right number. Over the last 20 months, he has developed from, oh, something's wrong here, to, oh, this guy's pretty good, and, oh, he's a legit top pair defenseman, to this guy's a number one defenseman, and then to last year, is he the best defenseman in the world? And is he going to win the Norris? Fell off a little bit with the Norris voting. Of course, he had that injury second half of the year, but I think that it is confirmed to this point that he is one of the best defensemen in hockey. I think there is some nonsense going on out there about how good a defenseman he is. There's a couple of different groups. The two groups I want to pick out in particular to rag on a little bit here that are always just way off the mark when it comes to Rasmus Dahlin in comparisons. Dallas. There's not a lot of you out there, but the Miro Heiskanen people, the Miro Heiskanen people have just been badgering Darlene for years. And maybe it's because he got off to a slow start, but Darlene to me, even though Heiskanen's a great defenseman too, a great defenseman, top pair, number one on his team. Darlene's better. Darlene's more dynamic. Darlene is more physical. Darlene is more aggressive. He scores more point wise. You know, they're pretty close, but I think Darlene's a better defenseman than Heiskanen. I don't even really think that's really all that debatable. I'm not saying it's a blowout, but I think most people would put Darlene ahead of him. And then there's the Ottawa people. And they, I mean, Ottawa's just, you know, about this, about every little thing, right? Like, never change Ottawa sports fans because it is always hilarious to see takes like this. Uh, but a whole group of them, including Bruce Garriott, who actually covers the sport, uh, covers the team for the Ottawa Sun, about Jake Sanderson and how this looks good for, oh, good thing that Ottawa got Jake Sanderson under the contract they got him under now. I'm looking around like, what? Like, we've compared Sanderson to power, and I think Sanderson could be great. But come on now. Come on. One 32-point season, and we're really firing up the Darlene comparisons already? Come on. We need to slow our roll a little bit. I'm not even ruling out that Sanderson can be elite like Darlene is, but come on. We're taking eight steps forward. to It's a real reach, I think, to get to that point. Darlene, I think, is one of the three best defensemen in the world. Um, in fact, well, the, really the way I'd want to put it, if I were starting a franchise today the with a defenseman, the number one guy I would pick is Kel McCarr, uh, undoubtedly. He is the most exciting defenseman to watch, and this is an entertainment industry, and McCarr is easily the most exciting to watch, but he's got the point totals. He's good defensively. He is always carrying the puck. He's always keeping it away from the opponent. He's great in the neutral zone, transition, power play. McCarr is McDavid on the back end. Uh, at least that's how he looks when he plays. I know he's not that level of impact, but he reminds me of that. The violent skating that uh, the Makar has. The the light uh, stick handling, if I will, where it looks like his stick weighs nothing because he's just moving his hands so quick. Makar's number one. I think Adam Fox is probably number two. If I were starting a, a, a team today with a defenseman, um, Makar, by the way, age-wise, you know, this all fits. Um Makar is only 24 years old. Adam Fox is also is uh, 25 years old. Um, so those two, I think, would be one and two. You know, Fox has a Norris Trophy. Fox has been in the Norris running three years in a row, finished second last year. He's got two 70-plus point seasons. Darlene only has one. So I think it's right to put him number two. Um, I would even listen to Darlene being number two, though. Darlene, to me, is number three. He's got that 70-plus point season. He's got that Norris-level season, even though it fell off a little bit due to injury. He is more aggressive, really, than those two. I think you know the big hits are not the most valuable thing in the world, but he's got that element to his game. I, I really think he is what a lot of people want Eric Carlson to be. I love Eric Carlson, and I don't think there's anything wrong with what Eric Carlson has been. Hall of Famer, one of the best defensemen of all time, if you ask me. But what's the thing he's always been criticized for? Anything that happens in his own end, anything where it gets always pushed off the puck easily, right? Or, you know, not hard to play against. Man, I'll tell you, Darlene does a lot of the things offensively, puck carrying, stick handling, shooting, that Eric Carlson does offensively. But Darlene's got all that on his own end. Darlene is hard to play against. He will punish you if you've got your head down coming through the zone. He will punish you in front of the net. He will cross-check you in the back of the neck if, if you're too close to his goaltender. Um, 
You know, he is an aggressive player. He's got that edge. And I think that helps make him a fan favorite. I'm not sure that's the most valuable thing, that edge part. I think the rest of his game, you know, what he does as a passer um, is really quarterbacking things. He really is the quarterback of the team. I think that's where the real value is, but I think the edginess and the toughness does make him uh, a fan favorite. Um, so a little more on Darlene's contract than a thought I have about Darlene in the future, but a little more about the number that we came in at $11 million. How do we feel about that people? I want to get to that. And then to Zach Benson, when we come back on the locked on Sabres podcast, we are presented by sleeper. I have never been as excited to talk about a new sponsor here on the show than sleeper. Because it is literally the easiest thing in the world for me to talk about. If you listen to me enough on WGR, I don't talk about it as much on the podcast. I'm obsessed with fantasy football. I'm obsessed with fantasy hockey. I'm obsessed with fantasy everything. Um, and Sleeper is my go-to. Look, like I, I, I have more leagues. This is this is my app right here. Can you see it? Look at all the leagues on Sleeper that I have. One, two, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, I'm a madman. Seven leagues on Sleeper. You can see that I'm losing a couple of these this week on Fantasy uh, fantasy Football Week 5 edition. But Sleeper is easily the most user-friendly app anywhere when it comes to Fantasy Football or anything Fantasy-related that you are looking for. Um, the website as well, super easy. But, man, the app really is it. If you're someone that plays on your phone a lot even if you draft on your phone i draft on my phone with almost everything now i set my lineups on my phone and make trades on my phone i do everything the app for sleeper i'm telling you it is it is so much better than anything else out there um so go to sleeper use the promo code locked on nhl you'll get up to a hundred dollars match in your first deposit so the NHL, you've got star players, McDavid, Ovechkin, chasing down the Gretzky goal record, and Crosby, I've talked about Makar, the stars on the Sabres. You simply select more or less based on their stats, over-under games on sleepers, super fun uh, with sleeper, such as goals, assists, points, saves, plenty more. Um, you heard me, Sabre fans, sleeper offers 100-time payouts, so start paying attention, make the right picks, and you could win big again use the promo code locked on nhl you'll get up to a hundred dollars match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply that's locked on nhl for the promo code see sleepers terms of use for details back here on the locked on savers podcast thanks for making us your first listen every day Darlene signs eight years 88 million dollars 11 million per year that's not a hometown discount and that's okay but it's the first big contract that Kevin Adams has signed that was not one that was considered, oh, you're signing this guy early and you're trying to do it because you're getting a discount. Now, to be fair, Kevin Adams didn't really have the opportunity to do that with Darlene because Darlene had already been signed to a bridge contract by Jason Bottrell. So the fact that he was already under contract made this a little bit different. He's already established himself. He's already had multiple seasons of great production. Um, he's been in the league for five years now. He is already established so you can't really get him early you gotta pay up you gotta pay market value and market value for Rasmus Dahlin is what he got as one of again I said it I believe it wholeheartedly for starting a franchise today he's one of the three most valuable defensemen in hockey I think what probably happened here and this goes back to an Andrew Peters report from about a month ago the Dahlin was pushing for a five-year deal the reason I would guess at that is because one Andrew Peters reported it trust Andrew and two that's what I would do. If I were Darlene, I'd go for five years. Let me cash in again and get another contract when I'm 28 years old. So how did that conversation potentially go? Just a guess. But that conversation could have gone as, well, we want to do a five-year deal. The Sabres go, well, we really want to do eight. And then if I'm Darlene, I'd go back and say, okay, I'll do eight, but you got to pay up. You got to pay a premium. I'm not doing your hometown discount if I'm signing an eight-year contract. And maybe the Sabres thought, well either get him for five years on a hometown discount or we can get him for eight and pay up. And they decided eight and pay up. And I think that's fine. I think that's completely reasonable. I think that's probably actually the better choice if you're the Sabres. Rather than save two, three million bucks a year, probably wouldn't have been three, probably like two year, million per year and save the five, the three years, I would just give me the extra three. I'll pay an extra couple million dollars a year. I think that's the way it, that I could very well have seen it going. Um, tough negotiations, right? Like it came down right to the start of the, uh, almost the start of the season, uh, the week of the Monday before a Thursday game. 
The NHL season begins tomorrow with Vegas and Nashville, a couple other teams playing. So really went right down to the wire. We had thought maybe this would happen in July right away. Um, but again, hard press negotiations between the two sides. No harm, no foul. We had gotten the question a bunch here on the show and on WGR. Like, is there a point where you would get worried about Darlene not being under contract? To me, it would have been weird had the season started without him being signed. I would have been worried, though. I really wouldn't have got worried until the season had begun and no contract was coming and the season would go off the rails. Like, to me, there was no way I'd get worried unless the season got off the rails because then I'd start thinking about, oh, man, does he want out now? You know, does does he not believe anymore in what we're doing? Like, why, are, why is this team regressing? All that's dead now. All that's gone. All that was probably unlikely anyway, because I don't think they're going to regress in a big way. Um, maybe a couple of individuals do. I love the contract. I think it's completely fine. Yeah, it's the second highest paid defenseman in hockey, but Darlene deserves it. And maybe you feel a little more comfortable doing that when you know you got Tage Thompson at probably $3 million less per year than he should be getting. Getting Dylan Cousins at about a million and a half less per year than he should be getting. Um, and also good on Darlene. You know, I'm, I'm all for players' rights. I'm all for player mobility and players um, cashing out as much as they can. You know, these billion billionaire owners, it's just if anything the players don't get is going in the pockets of the billionaire owners. So give me the millionaires over the billionaires and Darlene getting what he's worth. You know, I'm, uh, I'm glad to see it. Kevin Adams spoke about Darlene. He gave you the usual, you know, wants to be a part of the organization forever. Glad to see this commitment. A lot of the good stuff that you would expect. I actually thought the most interesting thing he said was about Owen Power. Owen Power is got one year left on his deal, and then he's a restricted free agent after just one year in the NHL. I've talked about him extensively throughout the offseason, and if you've heard me before on this, I am maintained in my stance that I just don't expect a contract. I don't think it makes any sense on Owen Power's front. You've only played one year in the league, and I would think I could become a defenseman that's worth maybe near as much as Darlene is worth. So why settle? Right now, when I've only played one year in the league, I haven't even really got my feet wet yet. Now, that's where a good Jake Sanderson comparison comes in, by the way, because Sanderson, like Power, top five pick, Sanderson fifth, Power first. Sanderson had a really good first year, but not unbelievable, you know, earth shattering. It was just a really strong rookie campaign. And Sanderson, one year in, 21 years old, just like Power, he decided to latch on with an $8.05 million contract um, for the next eight years. He cashed in. So maybe that's the contract and comparable for power. We talked about that, but I think power can go higher than that. So if I'm power, if I'm power's agent, I'm telling him not to sign right now, but maybe the Sabres like in the Darlene example might decide, eh, let's pay the premium and let's get him. Let's get him under contract right now. So P Adams said he's still in contact with power's agent and with power. So, my, the way that sounded to me, the way Adam sounded, he's going to push over the next three days to get this done. He is going to really try over the next three days to get power on an extension. I'm not guessing that it happens, but it sounds like the GM is trying and maybe he is that committed that he'll be willing to go to nine, maybe go to nine and a half. I don't know what the, the number it would take. Um, but it sounds like the GM really wants to do it still. And they're in contact, they're negotiating. So we'll see if something gets done. Time out here. When we come back, Zach Benson. Can't get enough Zach Benson talk in our lives, can we? That's coming up on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. We are presented by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, plenty more. Whether you're into speed, power, style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Final segment here on the Locked On Sabres podcast at Sneaky Joe Sports at Locked On Sabres. If you want to get a hold of the show, some news that we had been expecting for weeks. Days at least, but throughout the preseason and training camp. 
We've talked about him pretty much on every show for a few weeks. I can't get enough of talking about him. Um, so I feel like sometimes I'm beating a dead horse, but I think he's worth all the talk, all the hype. Zach Benson, the 13th overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft for the Sabres that all the prospect guests, all the Scott Wheelers, all the Chris Bakers, all the Hadi Kalakashes, the Ryan Lamberts, everybody that studies these prospects said, this is the steal of the draft. This guy is immediately the best prospect in the Buffalo Sabres system. And despite the fact that that he's younger than Matthew Savoy. He's younger than Yuri Kulik. He's younger by three. Is he younger than by two years? Two years from Isaac Roseanne. He's the one that has made the, the push, that has made the team. And Zach Benson, according to both Don Granado and Kevin Adams, is going to be on this team's opening night roster. And the, the reading was on the wall, the on the wall, right? All the other send downs, all the other waivers, Riley Stillman, I should have mentioned earlier, got waived, cleared waivers. He's in Rochester. So they're making some room. They have final roster cut down decisions Monday afternoon. We'll talk about that in our next show, what the final roster looks like. But Adam said that Benson's on the team. And he said, I like this line of thinking. This is, I love that the Sabres have become an organization that's not afraid of getting help from the kids. Far too often in history, especially on this team, going all the way back to when Lindy Ruff was the coach, this team would be too reluctant to play young players because they got to earn it, right? Or they got to go through their growing pains or they got to mature physically. No, nah, man, this this team Benson with uh, Granado, Adams, if you're just a damn good hockey player and you're going to help, we'll figure out the rest. We're going to put you on the team and figure out the rest. And that's what they're doing. Adams saying today, quote, we think at this point that he's been – we think at this point that he's been very impactful. He's helping us win. He, excuse me. Let me start over one more time. Reading's hard. We think at this point that he's been very impactful. He's helping us with the bottom line right now. And that's the key. Right there. That's Adams telling you. We know he's 18 years old. We know we just drafted him. But he helps us win right now. We're trying to make the playoffs. And I don't care where he came from. He's one of the best 12 forwards on the roster. And... It's probably way better than one of the top 12. And I love that the Sabres have an organization, have a GM that's willing to make that jump. And we'll figure out Savoy, right? We'll figure out the roster cut downs. We'll figure out what to do with Olofsson or whatever. We're going to figure out the rest because this guy earned it. This guy's going to help us. And the rest is just noise that we can work out. I think that's what they've done here. I love it. I think Granado's the perfect coach for uh, Zach Benson. Now, what's interesting is... At the 11th hour here, I guess it's Monday. Maybe it's more like the 9th hour or the 10th hour. They have switched up the lines. Benson spent all of training camp, all preseason, playing with Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner until the last preseason game when he got onto another line. And at practice on Monday, Benson skated with Casey Middlestat and Jordan Greenway. And Alex Tuck was back up with Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner. So maybe... Granado is back to locking his top line in, which is fine. I kind of like the idea of splitting Tuck up and experimenting in the regular season. Can we see if they can get another line going with Tuck? And then if it doesn't work, you could just put Tuck right back on the top line. Either way, that's fine. They are, uh, they're not going to do that. It's fine. I, again, I think there was a good argument either way. Uh, we'll see what Benson looks like with middle stat, but I like that combination. Both can fly around. Both can play off of each other. Greenway, the big body. I wonder if that played into it. Do they like Greenway on that line? Because it's six, six, you know, he could be the great defender for Benson. If anyone's going to mess with the rookie, you got to deal with big Jordan Greenway while he's also, you'd hope I'm still a little skeptical of this, but you'd hope capable of keeping up with those two, putting some pucks in the back of the net, doing the dirty work. Um, I guess that's what they're thinking for Greenway. I'm a little skeptical again that this will work with Greenway. I think we might get a couple of games in and be yelling from the mountaintops to get a different winger on that line with Middlestat and Benson. Um, but I'm open to it working. I'm open to it working. Granado seems to think it will work. So I'm at a point where I like to give Granado the benefit of the doubt on things that he likes to try. And Greenway with those two, we'll see. Um, I think Benson's going to stick. Every show, I almost want to say that. Until we get more information, which will be the regular season games. Nine games in is when they have to make a call. And my guess right now for how he's looked is he'll look good enough to where they'll keep him all year. That's my guess right now is that he'll stay all year. One last quick breaking news thing, actually, as I'm recording the show that I want to get in um, before we get out of here. It's not Sabres related um, directly. 
It is a Sabres topic that we've talked about a lot in the past. All offseason, really, all the way back to the maybe the trade deadline. We can end forever the Connor Hellebuck trade discussion. It's over. He has signed a seven-year extension, as has Mark Shifley, by the way. Seven-year extensions, both Hellebuck and Shifley signing for $8.5 million with the Winnipeg Jets. You know, it was at least a fun co- topic. You know, just in retrospect, it was a fun topic to talk about. There was an interesting topic. It was unique because of how good he was and the contract situation and the Sabres timeline and Levi. Um, I always liked talking about the Hellebuck idea. It always intrigued me, even though it was never perfect uh, for the Sabres. But end it now because he is staying as a Winnipeg Jet uh, seven years. I mean, for him at 30, it's probably going to be the rest of his career. So good for him. All right, that's it for us. We'll talk about the final roster when we come back on our next show. 23-man roster has got to be in by Monday at 5. You might be listening to this after Monday at 5, recording in the middle of the day on Monday. Uh, That'll be our next show for Tuesday. Uh, What does the roster look like around Benson, who we know is on the team? That's next time here on the Lockdown Sabres Podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.